To drive in Switzerland, you need to be 18 years old, but to hire a car, you're gonna to need to be 20. Make sure you take your driving license with you. If you have the photo card style license, which is what most people have these days, you won't need an international driving permit. But if you have the older paper style license, you may do, so look into that. Take proof of insurance. If you have car insurance for the UK, it likely covers some kind of European travel, but check with them to make sure. You don't need a green card anymore though. A green card is an internationally recognized proof of insurance. If you want a green card, contact your insurer and they should send you one, usually for an admin fee. Make sure you take proof of your MOT and also your fee five logbook, which is proof that you are the registered keeper of the car. When driving in Switzerland, you need to carry a warning triangle. It's a triangle that you can put behind the car if you break down and you need to keep it inside the car. You also need headlight deflectors, the little stickers you put on the headlights to stop you blinding oncoming cars because in the UK, your car is set up for driving on the left. That means when you drive on the right, like you do in Switzerland, you're gonna be blinding oncoming cars because your headlights are set up to shine more brightly towards the left and those stickers stop that from happening however if your car has a flat beam like this one does then you don't need those stickers you will need a UK sticker on the back of your car or your number plate will have to have UK on it with a union jack GB stickers are no longer acceptable and having GB on your number plate with either the EU flag or the union jack is no longer acceptable but if your car has that gb number plate don't worry you can still drive in switzerland with that number plate you just need to put a uk sticker on the back also in switzerland to drive on their main roads their fast roads you need a vignette you can get it from most service stations and at the border we got ours 25 kilometers outside of switzerland in germany at a service station. But when you get to the border, there are two lanes, one for with Vignette and one for without, so you can buy it there anyway. Ours costs 41 euros, 41 and a half euros actually. Just need to concentrate here. I find it a little bit confusing, these junctions. Yeah, 41 and a half euros, and very easy to get, so don't worry about it. You put it at the top middle of your windscreen or the top left or the bottom left of your windscreen and it's valid for over a year. Ours is valid from the 1st of December 2021 to the 31st of January 2023. That way there's no chance of you buying it on day one and on day two it no longer being valid. Oh and if you pass your driving test in an automatic in Switzerland you're automatically allowed to drive a manual. You will be pleased to know that you don't have road tolls in Switzerland. The vignette you buy, that covers the cost of driving on the roads. The speed limits in Switzerland are very sensible. 50 kilometers per hour in urban areas. Outside of urban areas, it's either 80 kilometers per hour or 100, depending on the signs, and they do seem to be sensible for the type of road you're driving on. And on motorways, it's 120 kilometers per hour and they're strict they're very strict when it comes to speeding there's actually a 20 swiss franc fine for driving less than five kilometers per hour over the speed limit so if there's a specific fine for driving less than five kilometers per hour over the speed limit well you know they're strict keep it within the speed limit and there is plenty of speed cameras people do drive well though they respect each other they give each other space and they do actually follow the rules you are not allowed to use your mobile phone when driving in switzerland but you can use hands-free devices if your sat nav highlights fixed location for speed cameras that must be disabled and any kind of speed camera detection devices are not allowed the drink drive limit in Switzerland is lower than that in the UK. In the UK, it's 0.08, and in Switzerland, it's just 0.05.
it's advised that you don't drink anything if you're going to drive because one drink can get you over the limit for a period of time a short period of time probably but you will be over the limit and for drivers with less than three years experience the limit is 0.01 so literally nothing at all like in many european countries you should give way to the right but also like in many european countries you don't often have to give way to the right because it's your priority if you have a yellow diamond sign with a white border then it's your priority and you have that pretty much all of the time it's only on very old streets without many road markings or signs that the give way to the right is likely going to apply on roundabouts you give way to the left as you enter the roundabout and once you're on the roundabout cars should give way to you unless road signs or markings indicate otherwise trams or vehicles on rails have priority except when they're emerging from a minor road to a major road and if a bus is indicating to move away from a bus stop you should let it out if you're traveling with children under the age of 12 or under 150 centimeters tall you'll need some kind of child seat or child booster seat that conforms with eu regulations road signs in switzerland are similar to that in the uk triangles are warnings the upside down triangle is give way red circles are what you shouldn't do and blue circles are what you should do the give way line is a bit different though in the uk the give way line is a double broken line painted across the road but in switzerland what you have is lots of little white triangles upside down triangles painted across the road zebra crossings are yellow never seen that before you can't park on yellow lines and you can't park out of urban areas if you want to park in an urban area if there is a solid white line in the middle of the road or a double solid white line in the middle of the road you must make sure your car is at least three meters away from that line and that there is space for two cars to pass you you can't park within five meters of a bus stop or a junction and you can't park anywhere where your car could be obstructing the view of a sign according to the gov uk website in switzerland in 2019 there were 2.2 deaths per 100,000 people in the population and that compares with 2.6 deaths per 100,000 people in the uk during the same year 2019 so it's safer to drive in switzerland than it is in the uk and i'm not surprised this feels like the safest place I've ever driven. During the day, if you're approaching a blind bend, you must sound your horn to warn people of your presence. And during the night, you flash your lights instead. But flashing your lights or using your horn for anything other than a warning is forbidden. Traffic lights are the same as they are in the UK. If amber is flashing, that means proceed with caution. If you are turning left and above the green left arrow there is a yellow flashing light or amber flashing light, then you must give way to oncoming cars. Winter tyres are not required by law, but they are highly advisable between October and April. And although they're not required by law, it is your responsibility to make sure your car is roadworthy. And if something bad was to happen, and the conditions meant winter tyres were required or all season tyres were required for your car to be roadworthy, you could be held liable. In some parts of the world that drive on the right, when the traffic lights are red, you can turn right, but not here in Switzerland. If the lights are red, you must stop. There is a low emission zone in Geneva. It will take about a week to get your sticker that you'll need to put on your window to drive in Geneva, so plan in advance. Although, if you already have the Crit Air sticker for driving in France, that is allowed in Switzerland, in Geneva. However, the one for Geneva is not allowed in France. In Switzerland, like many other European countries, 
the emergency contact number for fire, police and ambulance is 112. German is the most common language in Switzerland, followed by French, which is then followed by Italian. There's also a fourth language, which is called Romanche, or something like that, I'll write it on screen. Having so many languages can be confusing because the road signs can be in different languages, and when it comes to filling up with petrol or diesel, well, you wanna make sure you get the right stuff. So, if you want petrol, look for E10 or E5, or 98 or 95. If you want diesel, then it's either gonna be called diesel or gasolino, gasolio, gasolio, I think. I'll write it on screen. And gasol, which is the French one. Gasolio is Italian, I believe, for diesel. And gasol is French for diesel. Either that or it'll be called diesel. Also, petrol can also be called in Italian which is um, Benzina Verde or Zenza Piombo. And in French, it can be called Essence. Oh, there's loads of them. With petrol, it's best to go with the number. 98, 95, E5, E10, they're all petrol. The road quality in Switzerland is like nothing I've ever seen. It's so smooth. I don't think I've seen a pothole the whole time I've been here. And because everyone gives you a lot of respect, they give you space, it's a very relaxing place to drive. Don't worry about driving in Switzerland. It's easy, relaxing, and safe. If they had slightly higher speed limits in some places though, it could be more fun, especially these roads. They're amazing. This is downhill now, and I like going quick uphill, not so much downhill. I've decided to drive a little bit slower when I saw how big the drop-off was down there. You can literally see the whole village. Ooh, a little bit scary looking over there. A tip for driving on the opposite side of the road that you're used to is to remember which side of the road you sit closest to. What I mean by that is I'm sitting next to the curb. I'm not next to the middle of the road, the passenger is. So whenever I get to a junction, I simply remember to put myself next to the curb. That way, there's no confusion. If the steering wheel was on the other side of the car, then I know I would have to be next to the middle of the road when I pulled out of a junction. Generally, as you're going along, it's not a problem, but it's when you get to junctions that you can start to get a little bit confused. And roundabouts are fairly easy as well because you flow, it's almost like a dual carriageway having that island in the middle, so it's easier to know where you have to go. But you've got to remember, make sure you're looking left to give way, not right. This is something that's been confusing me these lines in the road i'm assuming that if you're not crossing them you don't have to give way and as i'm going left i am going to cross them so i need to give way and it's here where i believe you need to give way to the right well i hope this video helps if you think it does please give it a thumbs up and check out the link to confuse.com in the description if you're looking for insurance because you fill out one quote form and you get loads of quotes back from different insurers to compare who is cheapest. Subscribe to get my future videos and until the next one, cheerio.